Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we have a situation for you. Let's say you've been searching high and low for your dream Mustang, and you're trying to decide whether you should go with the analog gauges or the digital gauge cluster. Well, today we're gonna help you solve that problem. First thing you'll see when you get into your analog gauge equipped Mustang is the mileage in the bottom left-hand corner of the center screen and uh, go ahead and start it up. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll see the main menu where you can select different gauges to see, uh, your trip mode, track apps, you have some other options and driver assist and settings, which we'll get through all of those. So we'll start from the top. Gauge mode, first thing you'll see, Got your air fuel ratio, and each one of these has their own gauges, which is pretty cool. Work your way down, boost and vacuum. This is an EcoBoost, so obviously it'll include the boost side of this gauge. You have cylinder head temp, which is pretty cool. Work your way down, inlet air temperature. These are all things that you can have up full time on the screen and monitor as you're driving. Engine oil pressure, engine oil temperature trans oil and keep in mind some of these data points may change depending on how your car is equipped you got tire pressure as well digital speedometer don't believe this was available in the 15 to 17 models but they started adding it for the 2018 plus models distance to empty so it all really depends on how you want to view the data as you're driving Moving on down to trip and fuel. Trip one, trip two, everyone's familiar with the trip computers. Have your average fuel economy where you can hold to reset. Fuel history, same deal. And you could also reset your trip computers as well. Simple as, as, as simple as holding okay. Moving on to track apps. Again, depending on if you have a 15 to 17 car or 2018 car, some of these may change. For example, on the 2018 EcoBoost cars, they added the option for line lock, which was pretty cool. So status screen, accelerometer, it's pretty cool. You can see brake, lateral Gs, left and right, acceleration. They also include acceleration timers from 0 to 30, 0 to 60, all the way up to quarter mile. Same thing for brake performance, 60 to zero, 100 to zero. And again, like I said, line lock, which is available on the EcoBoost 2018 cars and GTs from 15 all the way up. Lap timers. And you have the option to view and clear results for any of those options. Driver assist on this particular model, it's pretty straightforward, auto engine off, If I believe it's if the engine is on for 30 minutes while you're in park, it will automatically turn the engine off. And then settings, you have vehicle, you can go through the lighting, the locks if you want them to lock. If you change your oil and the dealer forgets to reset the oil change indicator, you can go right here and switch it. Uh, windows, you can open with the remote. Yes, that's a fun fact, if you hold the unlock button on your Mustang's keyless remote, you'll be able to open the windows after holding that button for 10 seconds. Wipers, courtesy wipe. That's pretty much it. This particular car and model does not have my color, so there's no options there. My key, again, some features that have been around for a while. Display settings, you can change, you know, your distance to kilometers and temperature to Celsius, tire pressure, your language, etc. And that's pretty much it. Some people like the analog gauges better than the digital because it gives you more of a traditional old school feel. Now we're gonna hop into the digital dash and show you how that works. All right, on vehicles equipped with the digital dash, first thing you'll see, again, is the mileage in the bottom left-hand corner. And this particular vehicle is an automatic, so you'll see the drive selectors as well. Go ahead and start it up. So in most cases, this is what you'll see when the car starts up. 
It's a normal mode, but there's a ton of different displays you can display in that center section. And on top of that, the gauge layout does change based on drive mode, but we'll get to that. So to start, got your tire pressure, fuel economy, trip two, trip one, or a blank screen. This is the main screen you could display up front. If you're going on a long trip, you want to make sure that you're getting the right gas mileage. You can go ahead and throw this up on the screen. We'll start with the settings menu, which on the steering wheel is the gear icon. So trip fuel info, that's exactly what we were looking at before. And you have your driver assist, auto engine off, rear park aid, uh, depending on if your car is equipped with the parking sensors, you can turn that on or off and then your wipers auto on or off. You also have the option to show if you want kilometers per hour with your speedometer. Then you can go in advanced settings, set up your vehicle, oil life reset, remote start, the windows, your my key, your display setup, different measurement units, temperature, tire pressure, which language. And that's about it for the settings. Now that you're back in the main screen, one of my favorite things about the digital gauge cluster is the pony button. So once you hit it on the steering wheel, you'll see all the different options. Again, for example, you won't see exhaust mode if you don't have active exhaust. This particular vehicle is equipped with it. First things first, my mode. So, you can show the status. Normal, normal, it's in quiet mode for the exhaust. You hold OK to save it. Now, if you're looking to switch it up, you can set your car to sport mode, changes the gauge cluster, exhaust mode changes. Let's say you like the steering feel with sport, you like the driving mode in sport mode, but you want your exhaust to be a little bit louder. Let's be honest, everyone likes a loud exhaust. So what you'll do, is you'll change your exhaust mode to track. And then you can see, hey, my mode is sport plus with the steering wheel is sport but would track exhaust. In order to save that, you hold OK. The reason why this is awesome is because you can automatically set my mode to start up when the car starts up. Then going back, hitting the pony button. You also have your exhaust mode. Quiets with the valve shut. Normals with them cracked sports with them cracked even a little bit further and then they variable and open as the throttle gets pushed down track modes wide open and you have different times you could set the car to automatically start on quiet mode which is great if you're early morning when you're getting ready to go to work you don't want to wake the neighbors you could automatically say that at 6 a.m it'll automatically start in quiet mode when you're getting ready to leave for work. But if you start the car later, at 8.30 in the morning, it'll start in normal mode as normal. Moving on to track apps, you see a bunch of different options that we're familiar with from the track apps that started back with the 2013 GT500. With the acceleration timer, which is pretty cool. You can see it switches over, hold OK to start. Accelerate to start, pretty cool stuff. So you head on back to track apps, you got brake performance, you can view and clear the results from past runs. Line lock. Your lap timer, track one, track two, track three, viewing and clearing the results. Then your start option, let's say you want to do a drag race countdown or a racetrack countdown, that's pretty cool, or automatic based on the particular option you have selected. Gauges, this is one particular aspect that sets the digital gauge cluster apart from the rest. You actually have the option to display certain data points from your engine right on the center cluster. 
So for this particular model, you can display inlet air temperature, transmission oil temperature, vacuum, voltage, air fuel ratio, axle oil temperature, cylinder head temperature, oil pressure, have all these options. Personally, I'm a big fan of transmission oil temperature. Since this is a 10R80, I like to keep an eye on that. Cylinder head on those hot days. And let's throw axle oil temperature in there. So if you're an autocrosser, you like to take your car out on course, always want to keep an eye on that rear axle, right? So then, once you have all your gauges selected, you can select up to three. You go back and hit show gauges, and you can see them all right in the middle there. Left-hand side is the rear axle temperature. The center is the cylinder head temperature. On the right-hand side is the transmission temperature. Pretty cool stuff. So you want to go back, you hit the pony button again, keep going down. My color. My color has been around for a while. Digital gauge cluster makes it even better because you have more customization options. So personally, I'm a big fan of anything red, white, and blue. But we'll make this red, which is really cool. It changes the gauges around the car as well. Secondary color, let's make this blue. So if we go back for a second, be able to see the outline of the gauges are in blue and the gauges themselves are red. Pretty cool. You also have the option to change your ambient lighting inside the car. Again, this is all depending on which options you have. In most cases, it's 301A or 401A for the digital gauge cluster, so you'll probably have my color. Then you have the option to create your own my color. So you can actually go around the circle for my color one. Let's say you want more of a teal color. Hit OK to select. You can move on to the next one and create other different colors. So in order to go back, hit the back button. Say I want my secondary color to be that teal. So you go to my color one, what you just set, and you can see that teal color showing up on the outline of the gauges. Now we did touch on driving modes a little bit with my mode. However, you also have different driving modes with different gauge layouts as well based on application. For example, on normal, You'll see it's pretty straightforward, RPM, your tack on the left-hand side, your speedometer on the right-hand side, and then again, you have those gauges, if you'd like, in the center section, which I like to leave up. But if you have your mind mode, which we talked about, it's showing for track use because we have it set on track exhaust. And then Sport Plus which again, leaves it in that layout because that's the Sport Plus gauge layout and a My Mode uses the Sport Plus driving mode. Track changes things up big time. Big emphasis on the tachometer across the top of the screen. There's no question that you know where your RPM is as you're heading around course coming out of that corner. You also have the option to display different gauges in the middle. You have your inlet air temp, cylinder head, air fuel ratio, vacuum, voltage. You also have your accelerometer. These particular numbers are left over from an autocross session last month. But again, this is my preferred layout when I go out on the autocross course because I got my accelerometer right there. I can see after my run how, my, how many G's I pulled, which is telling me how well I'm gripping. And then on top of that, you got the tack right at the top it's telling you what your RPM is. And of course, you have other driving modes like drag strip, which is very similar to track, but obviously oriented for straight line use. Then of course, snow wet mode. It's pretty boring. Puts a pillow in between you and the gas pedal, but it really helps out when you're caught in a sticky situation during the winter time, or when you're cruising down the highway or in stop and go traffic in pouring rain. Let's switch it back to track mode. So keep that cool screen up. Again, it'll say for track use, see the manual. 
But anyways, guys, that's about it. Absolutely love the digital gauge cluster on my GT. In comparison to the analog gauges, it really boils down to what exactly you want. Ford did an awesome job of incorporating so many really unique features to take this digital gauge cluster and really make it your own with all different kinds of gauges you can choose or layouts. No one cluster is going to be the same from another. However, if you're looking for that old school feel, you really can't beat the analog gauges either. It really boils down to whether or not you think it's the right upgrade for you. All right, well, we hope you enjoyed that back-to-back -back comparison between the analog gauges and digital gauge cluster available in the 2018 Plus Mustangs. For my personal car, I'm a big fan of the digital gauge cluster and all the features it has, but we want to know what you think, analog or digital. Comment below. If you like this content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.